<laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, Sandra, how are you? Please share quickly, 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 quickly. And let us go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God and King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right, let us go, let us go, let us go. Hi, Atu Gerard is saying I'm happy to be in the platform. Hi, I'm so happy to have you on the platform as well, Gerard. God bless you and welcome to today's live session in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please jump in and tell me where you are joining in from. Hallelujah. Just tell me where you're joining in from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hi, good evening, Cassandra. How are you? Great woman of God, may God bless you. Amen. I receive the blessing and may God bless you double as well in the name of Jesus. Cassandra say, I am doing well. Glory be to God. I thank God for your lives. I want to see who is joining and where you're joining in from. I'm super blessed, super awesome. God has been so faithful. Thank you, Cassandra B. And I have, I've got Kenneth here. Kenneth is saying, I'm connecting from Abidjan, woman of God. And I believe God for my wife to get her papers for me to get her to Germany. I speak favor, Kenneth, in the name of Jesus. I give you two weeks. God is going to bring a miracle to you. I've got the woman of God. Van is saying, glad to get hold of the program to the more grace to you. Thank you and you're welcome on board. Welcome to the presence of Jesus. Oh, Gerard is joining from Cameroon Tombo. Wow, nice to have you on the live. Thank you for joining. Gerard, I'm watching from Thailand, Bangkok, and I'm and I'm received in here, Thailand. God bless you coming from Tyrone. I'm glad to have you on, on the live service today. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Cassandra is watching from Spain. Cassandra, are you the same person? I, the lady I prayed for some time ago. Are you the one? Are you the one? Just so I'm not forgetting. I've got Thomas. He's saying, good evening, prophetess. Hi, Thomas. Good to have you on the live. How are you? I've got my mommy joining in from Cameroon. Hi, mommy and prophetess. I honor the grace of God upon your life. I honor you so much, mom. God bless you. And thank you for joining on the live today. Kenneth is joining from, connecting from Abidjan. Thank you from Abidjan. Oh, I've got Pendy. How are you, Pendy? From Athens, Greece. Blessings to Greece. I release grace unto you in Greece. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thomas is watching from Cameroon, Bamenda, my hometown. Come on now, make some noise. Hallelujah. That's my hometown. I come from Bamenda, precisely Cameroon. Glory be to God. And I'm glad I'm able to say this here today because, you know, so many people, when they come in, they're like, oh, Oh, are you from Zimbabwe? Are you from Nigeria? Because you know they are, you know they are thinking what what I'm doing. It, 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 not, it should be coming from Nigeria or Zimbabwe. They have not seen something like this in Cameroon. But I'm one of those that God is raising in Cameroon from Bamenda. Hallelujah! I've got Amy Millions. Good evening, woman of God. I'm watching from Germany. Hello from Germany and welcome on board. Welcome to the good news world with the word of God with Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is happening. Please, all I need you to share. All I need you to do while you jump in is just share, share. I'm going to pray for everybody. You know, my place of origin is Bamenda Santa. Oh, glory to God. Mine is Bamenda Balinyonga. Precisely. Come on. 
<laughs> but you live in Tombell, hallelujah, yeah. Thank God. I live in the UK, but I'm precisely Bamenda, Cameroon, Bamenda, Balinyonga. But I, be I belong to the kingdom, so I am from everywhere. Come on now, hallelujah. Glory to God. My daughter Sandra, I'm connecting from Ghana. I know, and God bless you from Ghana, darling. In the name of Jesus, Mashanda, the Eba Zigodo. I want to know who is joining, and I want to know where you're joining from. So just keep your comments rolling. Come on, spend some time here. Tell me about you, where you're joining from. Just keep the comments rolling. And never mind, I'm going to be praying for everybody. Glory be to God. I'm going to be speaking the word of God into your spirit, and I'm going to be praying for everybody. Glory. God is raising great women from Bamenda. Yes, absolutely. I am so proud and happy with what God is doing from our nation, Cameroon, and precisely Bamenda. My mommy here, Janet Voma, as well, she's from Cameroon, and she's from Bamenda. She's from Balinyonga. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The seer from Cameroon, we thank God for the gift. Yes, mommy. <laughs> We give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We cannot be thankful enough to God for, for raising us, you know, for, for making us who we are. We are proud of who we are. Yeah. For choosing us, for picking us and, you know, and for this wonderful gift he has given us. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I'm no cat. Uh, Theola Nyonka from Cameroon Dwala. No cat. Oh, Nyonka. Welcome from Cameroon Dwala. No cat. How are you? Your gold color hairdo is beautiful. Oh, my prophetess. Thank you, my apostle. God bless you all the way from USA. Hallelujah. I've got, I've got, uh, Melanie from Cameroon, Bamenda. Hallelujah. I've got Cameroonians joining in. Come on, I'm Bali and Santa. Wow, I'm from Bali with your daughter. Oh, with my daughter Flavia. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Glory be to God. I've got Elvis. It's encouraged, Mama. Thank you so much, my brother. God bless you and thank you for being on the live tonight. I know God is going to do a mighty thing in all of your lives here today. Hallelujah. Whenever we find ourselves in the presence of God, hallelujah, in the atmosphere of glory, I know it's going to be mighty. I see my brother Jude say, I am Jude from Hooverhampton. Hallelujah. God bless you, Jude from Hooverhampton. I know you. How are you? And how are you carrying on with everything? Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. I've seen lovely and saying greetings. Mama, how are you, lovely? God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Lovely, there was a blessing that God is bringing to you. Oh, you're watching from France. Hallelujah. You know, France is just my neighbor because I've got, we've got, we've got uh, Germany, we've got Belgium, we've got France. So literally France is just by me. We've got Sweden, you know, very close. All these European countries, you're in France. God bless you from France. Lovely. Hallelujah. Hi, Jenny. How are you from Jamaica? <laughs> Jamaica is in the house. I had a Jamaican friend. He was so funny. Oh my God. When I go to work, he will talk and talk and talk. And like, he'll be asked, Ella, do you eat plum? Do you eat pear? You know, he's like, never mind. I'm Jamaican, but I'm African. <laughs> Glory be to God. Ah, look at mommy Martina. He said, I'm from Cameroon. Bali, Bali is in the house. <laughs> We've got a few Bali's in the house. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. How are you, Collins? I know Collins is um, from Nigeria, but I do not know where he's watching me right from now. Thomas is saying, we love you so much, Mama. We appreciate God for the gift and grace on you, Mama. Thank you so much, Thomas. I can appreciate God enough as well for giving this gift to me and for, uh, for the service of his people, for the perfecting of his saints. My prayer every day is that whatever God has put is put in me for me and for his people, I should use it diligently and serve him with all zeal and passion so I can do that I wish God placed me here to do. That's my daily prayer to the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Father. Oh, I've got Bonja for watching from Bamanda, Cameroon. I've got lots of Bamanda right here. You know how that feels? Thank you, Father. Evening prophetess. Hi, Heavenly. How are you? Where are you joining in from? Glory be to God. Oh, yes, I'm from Nigeria. But oh, watching. Yes, yes, yes. Collins is watching from South Africa. Glory be to God. 
I know God will locate me today. What part of South Africa are you from? Because literally I'm thinking of, you know, coming to South Africa. But oof, I'm not very sure just yet. I'm still on the spirit. <laughs> you know, we are spirit people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, Cornelia is here. How are you, darling? Look at her. <laughs> I'm watching from Boya. Just your smile is deliverance. My glory be to God. <laughs> oh my God. I would have loved to read this your prayer point, but it's so long, Kami. Come on. God is with you. I am praying for you, Kami. All right. I am praying for you from Germany. Evelyn is joy. Wow. You know, literally Germany is one of the places the Lord told me Germany will be coming. And I've got, you know, one of my daughters is from Germany. She's one of the technical team. You know, she's doing a lot on the background. I don't know if she's right here watching me now. Hallelujah. I bless God for your life, ma'am. May the oil on your head never run dry. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, we are growing. We are soaring. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Actually, Jared said, my sister told me about you and I'm so happy being here today. Wow. Who is your sister, Jared? Can I know her? Thank you, Father. I've got Clarine. How are you, Clarine? Yeah, I'm watching from US. What part of the world are you from, literally? Yeah, I know you're watching from US, but what part of Africa? Are you from Africa or you're, you're American? Hallelujah. I'm in Cape Town. Okay, Cape Town. It would be so great to have you here, my I know. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. You know, I just want to thank God for these wonderful people here watching me right now, you know, from all over the world. You know what? You you know that the internet church is is more is more advanced and because it touches every part of the world imagine we've got nigeria oh oh bridget all right <laughs> glory be to god i know her thank god thank god you know the the the, the internet connects people easily than you know if we have easily than more than more when we have to meet in the church because not everybody is able to come like look at here we've got south africa we've got abidjan we've got thailand we've got germany we've got america we've got united kingdom we've got cameroon and we've got bali nyonga we've got bamenda we've got boya we've got you know from everywhere and we are able to easily connect god's people we are able to minister right here to everybody across the world and people are receiving healing testimonies miracles are happening we thank god you know you know i always say with god there is no bad thing with god everything works together for our good you know when joseph said to his brothers you know when, when joseph said is that what what you meant for my bad god turned it for my good hallelujah you know oh i feel the presence of god so sweet and you know hallelujah thank you father you know when when joseph said to the brothers what you meant for my bad the lord meant it for my good because you might we might be thinking oh COVID came and this, this, that happened, but here we are right now, and it's become a powerful network of touching people all around the world. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my sister, Kiki. Oh, Kiki, 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 is it Kiki Tams? I remember praying for her, told you about me. The news is going, it is flying. Hallelujah. Hi, blessings, Apostle Emmanuel. God bless you, man of God. Flavia told me about you, and I've been watching you for over a year now. Really? But you've never mentioned my name like you did. I'm so excited, and I know God will locate me today. Glory be to God. <laughs> You know, when it's your season to shine, sometimes God will keep you there. You might be there, but he keeps you there. It's like, it's not yet the time. And when it's the time, God will speak to you and he will bring that which he wants to bring in your life because God works in times and seasons. Hallelujah. Mom, I just need direction because I am, I am in a waiting list. Never mind. God is with you and God is going to give you the direction. Gerard, Cameroon, I know that. Hallelujah. <laughs> How are you, Maxwell? With everything works together for our good. God bless you, my humble prophetess. Ella, more, more grace. We appreciate your effort to the prophetic ministry. Thank you so much, Maxwell. God bless you. Love you, my brother. For you saying love. Love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for these wonderful people. Thank you, Lord, for their lives. Thank you for that. I wish you are doing to them. 
Thank you, Father, for everything you are to them. I see Banda. Hey, how are you watching from Zambia? Hey, how are you? Banda, God bless you from Zambia. Glory be to God. I feel it deep in me that today is my day. Yeah, lovely. I literally saw you carry twins in your hands. I do not know if you're believing God for babies. I feel the power of God, Jesus. I do not know if you're believing God for, for the fruit of the womb, but literally, oh, I've got my daughter, my director. Hallelujah. My daughter, Pastor Tandy, is in the house. I honor her so very much because she's my, she's my leader. I call her my leader in her domain, you know, because we are in the season of commissioning. So I've been doing a lot of commissioning and appointment lately. Like I always say, it's very important to know your seasons, you know. I'm in the seasons of commissioning people. So literally my daughter, you know, she's the director for the, the online international day of prayer. You were all online with her. When was it? I think Friday. I wasn't there, but you saw what they did, how she carried the program how the prayer was it was so powerful and amazing you can see the good works my daughters are doing the servants of god i cannot thank them enough i love and i honor them so much for the mighty works that they are doing in the body of christ in the church and in the lives of god's people i know my god will keep leading and directing them i do not I can only follow the direction of the Lord in my commissioning, in my appointments. I only follow the commissioning of the Lord, the direction of the Lord. Yeah, that was last week, Friday. Yeah, it was so powerful. I wasn't there, but I was so impressed. I followed everything, life, but I wasn't there, but it was so powerful. I wasn't there as in my person not being there, but I was there in the spirit. Hi, Apostle Adoram. How are you, man of God? This time you're talking from your tight schedule to pray for us. God alone will pay you and not my amen. Literally, I just got back from work before I'm coming here. So I do my work. I do my job and other things. I make sure that God, I make sure that that which God has given me to do, I am doing it. She said, yes, mama. I even painted a picture of twins three days ago. And here I am telling you that I see you carrying twins in your hands. They are two boys. God is giving you two boys, lovely. And I give you from 25 weeks from now, it's going to start manifesting. <laughs> Mommy, you made prophetic so sweet. More grace. Jesus is winning. Jesus is winning. The Lord is winning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hey, Mom. Hey, darling. How are you? My daughter is here. Pastor Roxy, all the way from USA. Hi, Matty. How are you? Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. My daughter just came in as well. Pastor Roxy, all the way from USA. We are working on something big on the background as well. Something really, really big. You know, she's one of my directors as well. I call them my directors, my leaders, because they have got a commission. I'm commissioning them in different, you know, giving them assignment and things like that. And they are doing absolutely amazing. So we've got a big project that we are working on as well that is in the pipeline i'm doing a lot behind on it with my daughters as well so sometime next year we are going to launch that project and you know my daughter pastor roxy is right here she's going to be the director of that of that program that we are working on as well that is, is going to create employment it's going to you know employment to some of my daughters as well and because i'm literally going to pay them for the job they are going to be doing in that in that project we are coming up with is going to be a kind of mentorship something and we are going to get everybody enrolled i know right here watching me there are people say woman of god i want you to mentor me i want you to be my mentor hallelujah and look at that the best way i could mentor because i've been mentoring for over a year now but i noticed that sometimes we need formal mentorship informal mentorship is perfect but after the informal mentorship you need formal mentorship because the way i'm going to present myself formally to you is not going to be the way i'm going to present it the topics i'm going to be teaching you is not going to be the same way i'm going to present it as if i was talking to you informally 
So uh, we are building this project right now. They are into mentorship and we are doing formal mentorship with them on the background because like I always say, I have to mentor you from the background. Do that. You get the informal, you get the formal before we can send you out there. It is very, very important. So what we are building this project. There are a lot of you here. You're saying, you know, I want woman of God. I want you to be my mom, my mentor, my this. I am building a formal platform where I will formally and strategically mentor you there so you will be that which god basically actually wants you to be hallelujah so we are working on that it is coming it is coming it is coming it's going to touch the whole world the whole world is going to touch the whole world to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I feel the, the presence of God here. Make prophetic souls to what the generation is really blessed to have you. I thank God. I thank God. <laughs> I thank God for my life and for that which he has commissioned to me. I thank God for the fuel of charity in Cameroon. Tell Mama, I want to be your director too for the fuel of uh, of. of for the fuel of okay for the fuel of charity in cameroon you know i have a foundation it is called ella Beniela foundation literally i've got two for now ella Beniela foundation i've got a uh, uh, um uh, helpers ella Beniela helpers community and you know these two platforms that we have for helping and touching people you know financially morally in every way that we are doing it is literally the two names were given to me by god so the other one we bring together helpers and 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 those in need as well but the ella Beniela foundation i'm not looking for helpers it is my foundation it is what i am doing it is who i am you know so uh uh, uh what we do there is my goal is to sponsor children young girls i love women so very much and i really want women to know who they are to know their purpose so that is why i've got this foundation just for women and you know for now we've got uh, we've got nine already nine already nine girls they are literally in school we started last year formally. I've been doing this informally, but we started formally. So nine is in school. I'm going to come up with my team one of these days. I've had it in mind. So I'm going to come up with my team one of these days because we have to get the next recruit, the next set of kids to add with the ones that we have now for next academic year. So we are going to come out to sensitize the public to let you know what we do, the kind of people we are looking for. Like look at here. I want you to connect me the foundation so the people of Tomba can benefit, especially single mothers here. I'm actually looking for orphans, not even single mothers, because one prayer point the Lord asked me to pray about is against unwanted pregnancy. So we have to cancel the fact of single mothers. We have to grow to a sense of responsibility. It is very important. You know, there are mistakes that have been done. You can keep on doing those mistakes and tack yourself as a single mother. We have to grow to get out of that shoe. It is very important. And self-discipline and you getting wisdom is the key. So what I'm looking for, basically, they are offerings, young girls to help them financially with their education, to be there as a mother to them though i'm saying this i really <laughs> i can be all over the place and i don't know if i really have the time but by the grace of god i'm gonna come down to cameroon i'm gonna meet with all of this because i want to register this foundation back in cameroon my nation and you know it's gonna be like something like a proper thing and we have we have a lot that we are doing that i'm thinking of we have a lot we have a lot a lot you know, you know, like by the grace of God, we want to build our own schools, get our teachers because I was a teacher. I'm a trained teacher. So I want to get teachers, get a team. But we, I started that project, but you know, the Lord said something to me. The person I was working with, I, I could not really, you know, something there was a, a, a trust issues from the background. So the Lord had to, you know, ex show me some things and I had to put a hole on that project but we are still coming up with it we are gonna bring it we are gonna bring it i'm gonna bring my team you know i've been talking about it already we are gonna make a flyer i'm gonna bring my team because we need to start you know getting these kids together and thank god for social media i also want it in a way wherein 
the thing is most of the parents i get to they are not into social media and these are the class of people i'm looking for because i always say if you're able to have a smartphone if you can pay data then you can pay your child school fees do not use money for your child school fees to load data and come on facebook and tell people you do not have money you know literally i saw i was on the train i think two days ago and i saw this young man you know guess what this young man was on the train begging for money come to think of it he bought a train ticket on the ground london i know to tap to tap on do tap on tap in whatever he's doing it's gonna be about 10 pounds so he had to do tap on you know to get a ticket for about 10 pounds get on the train and beg for money so when i look at this man i was i sat there i was thinking to myself i'm like look at a zealous beggar you, you know the word I put, I tag him was a zealous beggar. He is a beggar, but he takes some of the money he get from begging. He buys his train ticket. He gets on the train to beg for money. Then I'm thinking, some people even have that opportunity, but they cannot even do anything with it. How can someone buy a train ticket, get on the train to beg money, moving from one carriage to another, from one carriage to another, from one carriage to another, begging for money? And I was thinking. You bought a ticket and you're begging for money. I'm like, wow, how zealous your prof your occupation is. He knows begging is his occupation. So he knows he has to invest to beg. Hear me again. He knows begging is his occupation. So he knows he has to invest to beg. But some beggars will be thinking, no, I have to save the money. But a beggar buys train ticket to beg. So whatever it is you're doing, that is how serious you have to be with your life. In whatever you're doing, if a beggar can buy a train ticket to get on the train and beg, what about you that God is giving you a job, giving you something to start with? What are you doing about it? So I'm going to be coming live with my team. We are going to be talking more about this foundation because now is uh, we are getting to June and uh, July, August. And I want that before July, we have gotten the, the, the people in place, get the budget you know get the needs in place do the budgeting and everything and you know and you know start you know just getting the kids registered in school before september school reopens so those are the two platforms i've had now to beg people and out of what we do there on the background we do help women i have women here i've given them money to start up business so many of them we help people in different ways we help men as well we help men we do help women we do it in different ways hallelujah so that is who we are but but uh, i'm just this just came up because thomas was like i would like to work with you with the foundation back home and you know oh, i like to work with people so very much but i'm a very zealous person that I need to see what I'm looking for in you. Or I need to know that what I'm passing on to you, you understand what I'm passing on and where I'm coming from so we can work together. And, you know, so the will of God can manifest for these people and for our lives as well. So I don't mind working with anybody, but I need to know, make sure you know where I am coming from and what we are doing and you understand it and you're passionate about this thing. Glory be to God. So I'm going to come live one of these days. And we are going to, you know, sensitize people then, you know, so we can start getting, getting the kids again together, getting them all together. So by the grace of God, thank you, Father, for today. You know, I was, I was, um, I was going to talk about two types of people in the kingdom of God. You see this message I want to talk about. It is not for everybody. <laughs> It is not for everybody, but if you're at that, in that place where you're saying, Father, I want to be exceptional. I want to be fruitful in the kingdom. I want to know what you're doing with me. I want to know where you're taking me. Then you've got to be part of this. I'm seeing just 97 shares. Hallelujah. I'm seeing just 97 shares. Please share the broadcast like hallelujah palm some heart glory be to god <laughs> god is doing something new god is always there to do something for you but he cannot do anything for you 
out of his will for your life. Hear this again. God is always there to do something for you, but he's not going to do anything for you out of his will for your life. Do you get it? Do you get it? Anything that is out of God to be for your life, he's not going to, God is not concerned with it. Why am I saying this? So many people are in the place of, Father, you know what? I just want you to do this for me, like right now, very quickly. You see that? And God is like, you know what? I truly, truly want to do this for you, but this is not in my will for your life. God cannot function out of his will for your life. God cannot function out of his, his will for mankind. He operates within that domain. So I want to talk about this. It's very important. There are just two types of people that exist in the kingdom of God. And it takes just for you to have the understanding and the knowledge for you to... Uh, wisely identify yourself so you can manifest quickly. See, God is not a God of delay. The God I know is not a God of delay. What I know is he works in times and in seasons and according to his will and his purpose for your life. Watch this. I'm going to take you to, it's a scripture we commonly know. Matthew chapter 25 it's a scripture we commonly know. Please share and bring someone on the light. This is this is gonna impact your life. This is gonna reroute your mind. This is gonna redirect you. Some people are like, I need direction. This is the direction I'm gonna give you here. The word of God is the key to everything. Hallelujah. So let's go. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. Hallelujah. I'm going to read very quickly. I'm going to be very quick because I've got to pray for a few persons as well. Like those needed prayers, I'm going to have to pray for you as well. So verse 1 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lands and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lands and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us, give us of your all, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Hallelujah. And whilst and while they were and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. After what came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I do not know you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Did you see that? This is a very common scripture. I'm sure everybody's like, <laughs> Master was like, mommy, we are ready to make notes. Please speak the wisdom to God for, of God to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am doing that. I am doing my best. Did you see that? I know it's a very common scripture. You say, woman of God, I do know the scriptures, but there are some things that I'm going to point out to you right here. And now in this scripture that you're thinking, you know, which you do not know. I'm bringing out the wisdom in the scripture. Please do help us to share. Bring someone here to get the wisdom, to hear the word of God. This is the only thing that will add light onto your life. Glory be to God. The word of God is God himself. Hallelujah. Look at that. And the key words, like I always, when I read the scriptures, I always say, you know, I'm going to take you back to point the key words. When I point the key words, then we can take it from there. That we are going to be placing our mind on, focusing on. All right. Look at that. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your all. Bridget is here. Bridget, how are you? I did see your brother. Your brother was here. Gerard was here. He's, he told me you told, you told him about me. Thank you for evangelizing, for telling someone about Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And the good works he's using me to do in the lives of his people. And it says, and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lambs are gone out. Did you hear that? This is begging. Please let me use our local pala. You see, I'm going to use the word. It is begging. The foolish were begging from the wise. You see that? But the wise answered saying, not so. Lest it be not enough for us. You see, you're begging from me. I'm, this is just an example. For example, you're begging from me. And I say, no, if I give you mine, mine is not going to be enough. Why am I saying, and this is one of the key points, the key notes that I want us to take note of. Because if you beg from me, I do not give you, you will say, I am selfish. I am wicked. Why don't I want to share with you? Do you understand? Because that's what so many people tack other, so many Christians tack other Christians. Oh, I asked this person for this thing. They do not give me. I needed help. They do not give me. Because people are not going to be there to help you all the time. Sometimes what I have is just going to be enough for me and I cannot give you because if I give you, it will inconvenient my service to the Lord. I am coming. Watch it. They said, not, not so. You're begging and the, they were begging. The, the, the foolish ones were begging from the wise ones. The wise said, no, I cannot give you mine because it's not going to be enough for me. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You see that? I know we'll be looking at this. Let me, let me, let me decode this, this scripture here. Hallelujah. Hello, Cox. How are you? God bless you. Look at that. Okay. Let me, let me, let me decode what was going on here. Because some people will be thinking, oh, this was oil and this was this. They would have just given a, a, a tip of it, you know, just put small in their lamb. So they, would, they can light their lamb for the main time. Then they can go back. That was wickedness. See, the truth is I always tell people, when you know the word of God, there are some things you will not even say. Some things you just know, you know what? This is how it ought to be. Hallelujah. Do I have my iPad charger here? No. Okay. And look at that. They said, no, if I give you mine, mine is not going to be enough for me. What were they begging for? Look at this. The oil we are looking, they are looking at here. The lamb here is the word of God. I know I don't want to go deeply into this scripture. I don't want to go deeply into it. Else we might take too much time. So I just wanted to. We know the scripture already. Hallelujah. So I just want us to. Just summarize it. Okay. The lamb is the word of God. And for me to prove to you. To show you that the lamb there is the word of God. Is if you go to Psalms 119 verse 105. It says your word is a lamb for my feet. A light on my path. You see that your word is a lamb to my feet. So the lamb there is what is the word of God. You see that? Then what is the oil? Then all those virgins, the oil now is the Holy Spirit. So what were these uh, foolish virgins begging from the wise virgins? They were begging, for, uh, the whole, they were begging like, please give me some of your Holy Spirit. You see, please give me some of your Holy Spirit. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm sorry, if I give you some of my Holy Spirit, I'll not be able, the, my Holy Spirit in me will not be able to sustain me on to, for me to wait for the, the bridegroom to come because he's got to be with me. He is my helper and he's the one to direct me, to show me the light, to show me the way for my helper to come. If I give him to you, what am I going to use to stay until the Messiah come, until when rapture comes, what am I going to use? I said, you've got to go buy yours. All right, let me show you what what they meant by you've got to go buy yours let me show you something <laughs> thank you jesus let me show you something literally they didn't need currency hallelujah they do not need currency let me show you what when they said okay go and buy yours it was not about this has got nothing to do about money here literally if i take you to isaiah 55 verse 1 it says come all you who are thirsty come to the waters and you who have no money come by come by and eat you see that come all who are thirsty come to the waters all you who have no money 
come buy and eat. You see? So they were saying, no, you go and buy for yourselves. And the word of God is saying is Isaiah 5, come you who do not have money, come buy and eat. You who are thirsty, only the thirsty will be fed. You do not need money. You see? It had nothing to do with currency, with the money we'll be thinking about. It is all about the word of God. And it goes ahead to say, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? What is the scripture saying? Only the word of God satisfy. And it is free of charge. You do not need any money. How about shake Hallelujah. Do you see that? Come and drink from the word of God. Come and let the word fill you. Come and draw the spirit of God from his word. Because the word is your life. I cannot give you my Holy Spirit. I cannot give you my word. But you can come and buy free of charge. You do not need money. That's why they told them, no, you go and buy. Go. And the word of God said, come all who have no money and buy. But you have to be thirsty. You see that foolishness start from where you are not thirsty? Do you see it now? You become foolish when you are not thirsty for the things of God. Because when you are thirsty, that is when you are seeking to get knowledge. You are seeking to eat that which you are thirsty for. Are you thirsty for water, for milk and honey? And the word of God, the word, the, 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 and the scripture said the word of God is sweet. Thirsty. The Lord said come and test. Come test and see that I am good. And the word of God said, God is, the word is God himself. Then he said, test and see that I am good. So you must be tested. You see, you must be tested to be wise. But when you're not tested, you're foolish. And the word, that, like I said, it has nothing to do with currency. You see that? All right, let's go. These are the keynotes, the first things I want you to note. And the topic again is the two types of people in the kingdom of God, the foolish and the wise. There are just two types of people in the kingdom of God. We have the foolish and the wise, not the rich and the poor. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It is the foolish and the wise. Do you see that? All right, let's go. Let me take you to the next key note, key points that I want you to know that please share and invite someone. The word is so sweet. We are going to enjoy it tonight. It's going to, you know, it's going to do something to your life today. I know whenever we are listening to the word, your light is adding your knowledge. You're becoming wise and your test is increasing. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. And why they went to buy, the bridegroom came, you see, not planning in time. Not study, not acquiring knowledge in time. You see that? Not knowing, not knowing. Now is the time. Not knowing your season. The Lord is like, now is the time for the season for you to acquire knowledge. You are not getting knowledge in time. You do not. When the Lord said, now is the time for you to be this, you are not doing it. You see, working in the timing and the seasons of God is very important. Because they were all virgins. And the virgins there is just describing the Christians, the pure. Because why do they call them virgins? The word of God says, you are the righteousness of God. I don't want to go too detailed into it. We might have to go very detailed when detailed getting all the scriptures. You see that? You are the righteousness of God. And if you are righteous, the word righteous, you are standing right. And you can derive the word holy, pure for me. You see that? So they were all the righteous ones of God. But some were foolish and some were wise. Because in the kingdom of God, God has already made you his righteousness. By receiving Christ in your life, you become a new creation. You see that? Thank you, Father. Let's go. Okay. It says, and that while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Not walking in the timing and the seasons of God. Not understanding your timings. Not on, not planning well. This is what is going to happen. You're going to miss your blessings. See, this is just a whole thing here. You're going to miss your blessings. Not that God did not release it. Not that God is not blessing you. But you do not plan well. When you were supposed to be, when the messenger was coming to receive, for you to receive, that is when you were still going to go and buy. That was when you were still trying to acquire knowledge. That was when you were still, you were still trying to accuse yourself you see that that's when you're still trying to pray when you're supposed to have stuck your prayer banks that's when you're still like holy spirit come when you are supposed to have even known that you have the holy spirit all right let's go look at that and there and they that were ready went 
in with him to the marriage. You see, those that were ready, who are those that are ready? You that you are aware of what God is doing in this dispensation. You that you know that a rapture is coming. The word of God said, be sober. Watch and pray. You see that? You do not know. The bridegroom comes and the door was shut. After what the others now came. And even the people that you've been begging from, they are not giving to you. Because they cannot give you. When the bridegroom is coming, nobody is thinking about you. Everybody is thinking about their salvation. Everybody is busy about their salvation. Look at that. Okay. Let me take the message now in another point. I've, I just wanted to give this small, this, you know, this brief summary in another dimension. Okay. Another thing that I want us to point out from this scripture is company, friendship, association, your peer group, your liaison, the people you're linking with. It is very important. All right. Look at that. There were, there were foolish virgins. There were wise virgins. You see that? Company is what we have to take note of. Friends, association, your liaison, your, your, your peer groups, the people you interact with, the people you keep as your friends. You see that? Okay, let me take you to somewhere. Um, they say, the scripture says what? The wise virgins, there was the wise and the foolish. Hmm? The foolish is taken from the, it's a Greek word. Foolish here is a Greek word that, the Greek word which means morals. And we can relate morals to the word moron. Has ever, anybody ever told you you're a moron? <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> when I was growing up, my mother used to say that to me a lot. <laughs> you just mess up. You moron. Hallelujah. And what does the word moron mean? You can get your dictionary, you see. It means dull, without an edge, mentally in it. Nonsense sticker. You see that? <laughs> Acting brainless. You see that? Nonsense sticker. You're foolish. You're acting brainless. It means you're dull. You see the word foolish? And you know the scripture where the word of God says, I get knowledge. You see, get knowledge. So, because knowledge will help you to interact even with the wrong people. It will help you to choose your company, to choose your friends, to choose the people you are keeping. You see, moron. You are moron when you're foolish. That's what the word of God calls you. But what does the word of God again says at the entrance of their word give it light because when you get the word of god you get knowledge and when you get knowledge what it differentiates you it sets you apart wisdom sets you apart not money not currency but wisdom sets you apart and foolishness sets you apart as well in in a foolish way <laughs> hallelujah Okay, let's see. Let me let me take you to the next. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So now the word of God is saying five were foolish. It simply means what? These five Christians as virgins, they lacked an ability. To understand the mysteries or the secret doctrines of the kingdom hidden in the parables. You hear this? Because this was a parable. The Lord was. He said the kingdom of God is like. You see it? The kingdom of God is like. It was just a parable. Meaning what these five foolish virgins. They lacked the, uh, the understanding. Or they lacked the ability to understand the mysteries. Or the secret doctrines of the kingdom which is hidden and it is not about you understanding the doctrines of a christian no or of the church no it's of the kingdom because the lord said the kingdom of god is like so it is you having the ability to understand the sacred mysteries hidden in the kingdom that unlocks you to a place of wisdom that unlocks the ability that god has put in you to manifest as a kingdom citizen 
not as a church citizen. <laughs> I I was telling my daughters, I said, I have to teach on kingdom and on church. You see, I was I have to teach on kingdom and church because so many people are seeing the place of church, not in the place of a kingdom. Because in the kingdom we rule, we rule. In the kingdom you are a king. You see that? <laughs> Let's not go into that. Let me just let me bring this. Let me just go into this for tonight because it is night time. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on now. I'm bringing it on. I'm bringing it on. Okay. The kingdom of God. The kingdom. That's why when Jesus says, say, the kingdom has come, heaven has come. Jesus did not say the church has come. He did not say church has come, Christianity has come. No, he said the kingdom has come. Jesus brought the kingdom, not the church. Because he wants you to manifest in the kingdom, not in the church. Because there are things in the kingdom. There are treasures hidden in the kingdom that will prosper your life, that will give you wealth, that will transform you in the kingdom. Okay. But I'm not teaching about that tonight. <laughs> the kingdom reveals the secret of God. Hear me very well. The kingdom, it reveals the secret of God based on righteousness, but on wisdom. Do you know in the kingdom we operate based but on righteousness? That was why the, 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 the Lord said the kingdom of God is like 10 virgins. Oh my God. <laughs> The word of God is so sweet. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show, let me go back to the scripture again. So I, I really relate this so well. You understand what I'm talking about. Jesus, thank you, Father, for your word. All right, look at that. <laughs> okay. In the, the kingdom of God reveals the secret will of God based, based not on righteousness, but on wisdom. I'm going to repeat this. The kingdom of God reveals the secret mysteries of God, the secret will of God, based not on righteousness, but based on wisdom. That is why the scripture says, uh, uh, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like, you see that? At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lambs. Who are the 10 virgins? The 10 righteous people. They were righteous because in the kingdom, you don't operate based on righteousness. You operate based on wisdom. The kingdom, at that time, the kingdom of heaven. You see that? God wants you and I to operate as Christians in the kingdom. As kingdom people, not as Christians. More of a kingdom mindset. Because when you have the kingdom mindset, we plan a kingdom is a kingdom rules. In kingdoms, we rule. Ah, I love the word of God. It would be like 10 virgins who took their lambs. 10 righteous people who took the word of God. But they do not have wisdom because it is the Holy Spirit that gives wisdom. It is the Holy Spirit is Jesus and Jesus is the spirit of wisdom. Jesus is the wise. Jesus is the wisdom. <laughs> you can have the word, the lamb without having the spirit, without having Jesus. You can know the word without knowing Jesus. Mm -hmm. You cannot operate as a kingdom citizen without wisdom. Without knowing Jesus. See, that is why most believers are broke. Sorry, let me not say believers. Most Christians are broke. That is why most of them are broke. They're in the place of fasting and prayer for 125 years. Nothing will change. They are operating as kingdoms. They are the virgins. They are the virgins who took their lambs. But there's no wisdom. Because in kingdom, we operate not based on righteousness, but on wisdom. That is why they do not... They, were, they said there were 10 virgins... Ten righteous people, five were foolish, five were wise. The wise were those that had unveiled the secret of kingdom and were operating as kingdom citizens. The others were still church members. <laughs> oh, the others were still operating in righteousness because you move from righteousness, you grow to a place of wisdom. Then you manifest in the kingdom. And we know what the kingdom is. You rule because there's a ruler in the kingdom. I don't want to teach about kingdom tonight, but I will come back with this kingdom and teach. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Look at that. Thank you, Father. 
your ability to unlock the doctrine will reveal to you treasures of the kingdom. Hear me very well. Your ability, <laughs> your ability to unlock this doctrine, these parables, you cannot operate as kingdom citizen without wisdom. Yes, absolutely, man of God. Your ability to unlock the doctrines, all these parables that Jesus was speaking, revealing, speaking in parables. He said, this one is not for all of you. You are a Christian, but it's not for you. That is why I speak in parables. So that hearing you hear, but you will not understand. Because only kingdom citizens understand parables. Mm-hmm. Because there are treasures and mysteries hidden in there. And it's like a treasure. When you find a treasure, you know what it means. I don't want to go there just yet. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll just teach the part of. I just want to focus on the part of your company. As a, as a virgin. As that righteous one in the kingdom. For now. Then I will bring the other part of you finding the treasure in the kingdom. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right. One thing I want you to note is you are only as wise as the five wisest people you choose to put in your life. I'm not going to say you choose to keep, but you choose to put in your life. You are only as wise as the five wisest people you choose to keep in your life. And you are only as foolish as the five foolish people you keep in your life. Because in the kingdom, we have foolish Christians. We have the wise ones. So your company, are you choosing the foolish Christians or you're choosing the wise one? <laughs> okay. I'm sure when you read the scripture, you're thinking, okay, these foolish ones just appeared and all of them were foolish. The wise ones just appeared, all of them were wise. No, there was one foolish one that chose a foolish one. The foolish one chose another foolish one. The foolish one chose another foolish one. The, in fact, foolish people found them. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's so funny when I'm teaching the word of God, but it's a lot of wisdom. Because it's not like the foolish ones, somebody came and separated them and said, okay, you, this one, you're foolish. You are foolish. You are foolish. Stand there. You are, you are wise. Stand. No, there was one foolish one that picked four foolish ones and they, <laughs> they became the foolish ones. One foolish one chose a foolish one. The foolish one made another foolish one. They became, another foolish one made another, they became five. Same with the wise ones. Nobody separate, nobody came and picked them to be foolish like that. You see that? Nobody. They were all random Christians that identified themselves in the group of foolishness. The wise ones identified themselves in the group of wisdom. You see that? Okay. Let me take you to this. <laughs> Mommy, we are learning. This is very deep. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, but of the same feathers flock together. Bad company corrupts good company, but good cor company corrupts bad habit. This is just what happened with them. Nobody picked them to put them in the group. They, they identified them, themselves according to their foolishness. Do you know that in our world today, no, I'm not, I'm not of the world. In the world today, you see that foolish, uh, you see that when you come to you come amongst friends. This is the reality. You will see, you identify something similar with all of them. If that, there's one, if you see that all, either all of them, they like going to, they like clubbing or they have something that is of interest to all of them. How do they get to that group? This one, there was one that met another that spoke something that was like what she is and what she likes then now they identified another they identified another until another came then they became all who they were so that is why you see rich people they, they associate with rich people because you will never see a rich man with a poor man what will a rich man be talking with a poor man you will never see a stupid person with a stupid person what will a, with a full, wise person because foolishness people foolish people like to talk foolishness 
People that like to go to club like to talk about clubbing. People that like to talk about men who, who like to talk about men. People that like to talk about women. So they'll always find their, that association, the people that are like them, to interact with them. Nobody puts them in your life. You choose them. How are you, Prophet Joseph? You see that? You choose them. It is very important you know your company, your liaison, your peer group, your association. Hallelujah. All right, let me show you something here. That there is, okay, let's go to Psalms 1 verse 1. Psalms 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the one who does, who does not walk in step with the wicked. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. You see that? Blessed is that one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the company that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. You are blessed. You are blessed. It is very possible. <laughs> exactly. Foolishness attracts foolishness. <laughs> Man of God. Foolishness attracts foolishness. And it is very possible to be guilty by association. Hear me again. It is very possible to be guilty, guilty by association. And it is equally possible to be successful by association. That was why the wise ones, they went with Jesus. When the bride came, the gate was open, they went. But the foolish ones... The, the gate was shut upon them. You see that? Have you ever been with someone and this person is doing something which is not right? Before you know it, they start thinking, everybody start thinking you're like that person. Mm -hmm. You've had those friends, those people in your life, right? That this person is so terrible that everybody start thinking you are terrible like them. That's the notion here. This was what happened with these 10 group of uh, 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 Christians in the kingdom of God. Yes, guilty by association, equally successful by association. Very true. I'm telling you. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I want to show you a woman in the scripture called Ruth. You know, a lot of people are not where they are today just because of associations. You get yourself caught up somewhere you're not supposed to be because you found yourself with the foolish ones. You identify not finding yourself. You identify yourself because you choose your friends. Hallelujah. Very important. You choose your friends. You do not choose me as your friend. Like I always say, I choose you. You do not choose Ella as your mentor. I choose you. So when people come, oh, you're already my mentor. I look and I laugh because I choose you. You cannot choose me as your man, as to be your mentor. I choose you. I choose my friends. My friends do not choose me. I like people come. Oh, I must. Um, I want to get married to you. I choose my husband. My husband does not choose me. Simple. There's nothing like oh, I want to get married to you. No, I choose my husband. My husband does not choose me. If you come and choose me, I want to get married to you. I do not want to get, I tell you, I do not want to. So I choose my husband. My husband chooses me as his wife. It's not like he chooses me. You understand that? You don't come and say, I want to get married to you and I just come and get married to you. No, I choose you to be my husband. I decide for you to be my husband. You decide for me to be your wife. I decide for you to be my friend. You decide for the next person to be your friend. It's not like I just found myself. No. Kingdom citizens, you do not say I just found myself. You don't just find yourself. You are foolish. That was why the foolish ones were, they just found themselves. You see that? Thank you, Father. Decision making is the key. Decision making is the key. I can't wait to teach people this. Oh my God. Decision making is the key. You decide who you keep in your life. The people you interact with. Not them choosing you. Not them deciding. No. Hallelujah. Let's go. I want you to, I want to quickly take you to uh, the book of Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. But Ruth replied, do not urge me to leave you or turn back from you. 
Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. You see that? That is rude. Amen. That is rude speaking when Naomi was like, Rude, you know what? I will want you to go back to your people. What did Ruth tell Naomi? Oh, I've got my charger is upstairs on my tablet. My thing is going off. Anyways, I'll use that phone. You see that? Ruth said, No, I will go with you. Ruth made the decision to go with Naomi. Ruth said, no, I will go with you. Your people, thank you, Apostle Lissigo. Thank you so very much. God bless you, man of God. Your people will be my people. My people will be your people. So Ruth decided to go with Naomi. You see that? She would have decided to go off with her best friend, Oprah. You see that? Ruth would have decided, oh, I've got my best friend Oprah somewhere. I'm going to follow uh, uh, Oprah than to go with her God friend Naomi. You see that? You can decide to go with Ella, your, 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 your friend that you guys would do whatever you want to do. Or you can decide to go with your God friend Roxy. You choose wisely. According to where you know where you're going to, you know who you are, you know who you want to become, you choose wisely, you do not join the company of the foolish. You think, look at yourself, where am I coming from? Where am I going to? Where do I belong? I belong in the kingdom. I make a decision. Ruth made a decision to let go of her friend Oprah and to go with her God friend Naomi. You see that? It is a decision. I wish I had a choice. I had... I had arranged marriage. Yes, I know. Some things like that happened. Things like that happened. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know why many fail? Many fail their journey of life. <laughs> From this, Allah, we will go with you. <laughs> many fail in their journey of life simply because... They choose the wrong location. They choose the wrong people. I was telling my daughters, I said, I'm going to teach on dream, on your visions, and to teach you how Joseph was able to identify his loca uh, location, domain, and, you know, things like that to identify. This is very important. Many fail in their journey of life because of wrong association. Wrong, you get on the wrong boss you get on the wrong route you get with the wrong people especially the wrong people the wrong people will get the gate shut upon your life when the bridegroom is coming the wrong people will get that gate of opportunity you've been praying and asking god for a shot upon your life you will not be able to get that opportunity because you're associated with the wrong people with foolish people you see that all right let's go let me show you something Thank you, Jesus. All right. Root. Root in Hebrew means, let me bring the, the meaning of root. Root in Hebrew means a female association, a friend, a maid, a neighbor. It comes from the root of Raha. <laughs> Prophetess, I'll go with you, mom. We are on the same boat. Glory be to God. Okay, let me not dwell on that. Let me go on the next thing. Let me go to the next. I want you to know one thing in life. Your peer group will influence your life a lot as a Christian in the kingdom. Your peer group, your company, the people you keep as mentors, the people you keep as friends, <laughs> it will it will it will influence it will decide which way you go because if they are foolish people before you know it you're going in the path of foolishness you're going in the path that will destroy cause destruction to your life because all they keep speaking to you will be destruction the wrong people the foolish people will get the doors of opportunities in your life shut up like the gate was shut up when the bridegroom came upon the foolish ones, they will get the door shut up. Hallelujah. 
All right. Your company, your friend would determine your end. All right, let me show you something. Let me go to this one. I've said you're only as wise as the five wise people you keep in your life. The next lesson I want you to learn from this scripture is it is foolish to go through life with a lamp and nothing to light it with. Hear me very well. It is foolish to walk through life, go through life with a lamp and nothing to light it with. This was what happens to the foolish ones. They had the lamp, but there was nothing to light it with. So when darkness falls, what are you going to use to light it with? You see that? Okay. The And one foolish thing about foolish people is that they always make excuses oh i cannot do this you know this this one has gone up this has come down then they find another foolish person that cannot do it like them and in, and stay with the person hear me very well one great lesson you need to learn about foolish people is They'll always make excuses. Oh, I cannot do this. This one, you know, people have tried to do, do The people tried to fail. How can I be able to do it? Why do you think you do it? When you hear things like that, it's a red flag. There's foolishness there. Because the word of God says you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You see that? And if God can do everything, then you can do it. All right, let me show you some red flags to take note of when associating, interacting, even the church you go to, it is very important. What are they telling you there? Are they telling you you cannot do something? Is your pastor telling you they tried to do this and they feel therefore you cannot do it? Are they helping you to get the oil and the lamb ready for it to be lighter when the bridegroom comes? Or you don't even know if your lamb, your oil is ready. Or your light is ready. Or you just carry the lamb. You're just there with them. <laughs> Find another food to help you with more foolishness. <laughs> this is a great lesson that most Christians are, are stuck in this place. They are in the company of foolish people. All they hear is foolishness. All they do is foolishness. All they hear is limitations. Things that cannot go well with them. Then they keep missing opportunities. The gates keep being shut on them. And they keep praying and nothing is changing. Because they are still in the place of righteousness and not in the place of wisdom. In the kingdom of God, we do not operate based on righteousness. We operate based on wisdom. You manifest in the kingdom. You unveil secrets based on wisdom. I remember the day the Lord said to me, Ella, revelation is hidden only to the wise. Why was Jesus speaking to in parables? Because he knew all of them are Christian, but some are foolish, they are wise. When the wise catch it, they will unveil that treasure. They will unveil that opportunity. They will unveil that will of God that he has kept for their lives. Of course, blind leading the blind, expecting to be in a different destination. A lot of God's people are caught up in that place today. And I know that you're coming out of it today. You have to choose wisely. In your life, is it your friends? Is it your husband, your mentors? Who are you choosing? Do you just choose anyone because a man just pop up? Oh, I want you to be my husband. You're getting married to a foolish man. You're getting married to a foolish woman because they, they just pop up. Is that what you're doing? You will end up being foolish as them. <laughs> and you have foolish children. You have a family of foolish people. <laughs> You see that? Oh my God, Lord help us today. We cannot be caught up in that place. Jesus, we are not raising a family of foolishness. Jesus, thank you, Father. You see that? All right, let's go. Red flags to take note of. Red flags to take note of. When choosing your peers, your husband, your wives, whoever it is. If you are in that place where you find it difficult to say no to even people close to you, 
then you might be acting foolishly. Hear me very well. If you are in that place where all the time is yes, yes, let's go here, yes, let's do this, yes, let's, yes, you cannot say no, then you, 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 you might be diving towards foolishness. You might be going towards the gate. The, the, you might be one of those that have the lamb, but you do not have the oil. <laughs> Everybody's laughing because I say you have a family of foolishness. <laughs> you see that? The second red flag, flag is, is pleasing people more important to you than taking care of yourself? Hear me very well. Is pleasing people more important to you than taking care of yourself? Oh, I just want to get this so people will, you know, I just want to all the time. You're thinking about what people will say. You want to satisfy people. You want people to say, wow, you got that. You see that dress. But why you're in the place of dissatisfaction? If you are in that place, you're, in fact, there's a question mark of, there's a red flag on your head. You might be operating in foolishness. You might be one of the five virgins, the five foolish virgins. Hear me very well. All right. Do others come to you for how you can help them or for what you can do for them? Do people always come to you just for what you can do for them or how you can help them? Then there is a question mark somewhere. Hear me very well. There is a question mark somewhere. If people are only coming to you to collect, ask my daughters. I tell them some people I don't go to. Why? Because I know why you're coming to me. You just want to get. You just want to get. You just want to get. You cannot always be getting, sweetheart. Come on. You cannot always come to me to get honey. Did you see where, how the wise, the wise veggies refuse to give some of their oil to the foolish veggies? You see it? When you come, I say, I'm not giving you things. I'm not, no, pray for me all the time. I'm not praying. You think I am, I am being mean, wicked. I'm not being wicked. I'm just acting wisely. You see that? I'm just acting wisely. The, the foolish veggies went to the wise veggies. Can you please give me some of your oil? They said, no, sweetheart, go buy yours. You see that? So it is wisdom. If you are in that place where all the time people are coming to you just to come and get, there is nothing they can do for you. You are acting foolishly, sweetheart. You are keeping, you have foolish friends around you. You have foolish people around you. And you might as well be foolish. You see that? It's a red flag. Give me some of your oil prophetess. I'm sorry, go and buy yours. And I'm telling you, go to Isaiah 55 verse 1. Come and buy without money. Go get your Bible and study it. Go and buy from the word of God. You see, it's wisdom I'm speaking. All right. Now you know I've been operating from the place of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let me give you another red flag. Let me give you another red flag. Thus, your company, the, your peer group, do they rejoice in your accomplishments? Or they are quick to dismiss it. Do they encourage you? Do they rejoice in your accomplishment? Or they just roll their eyes and say, no, that one is not good. Go for the next one. Do they celebrate you? Do they appreciate you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do they? That's another red flag. To tell you that you might just be keeping foolish people around you. Who have got nothing good to speak to you. Who have got no wisdom to speak to you. All right. Do you have people around you that are always saying to you, you know what? You cannot do this thing. You cannot be it. You cannot be that. You, you, you know, this thing is so, that's a red flag. You might just be keeping foolish people around you because wise people do not speak like that. Wise people are equipped. They've got knowledge. They know that with knowledge, you've got, you can do everything. What people are you keeping around you and what are they telling you? What company have you had? Do you, are you keeping five foolish virgins or you're keeping five wise virgins around you? It would determine how much you manifest in the kingdom. You are not disqualified, but it determines your manifestation in the kingdom. It determines how much talent you will get. There is something I'm going to quickly show you. All right. 
Let me quickly go here because I want to bring this last section of it. It will truly bless you before we enter into a time of praying for people. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. Okay? You know, I'm speaking from the word because if I was speaking, they would say, no, she's just speaking philosophy, theories, one school of thoughts from somewhere. But thank God I'm speaking Jesus himself, the word. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5 says, A wise youth harvest in the summer, but one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. Did you hear that? All right, before you come and say, this woman of God likes to just say some things. We don't know where it's coming from. Proverbs 10, 5. A wise youth harvest in the summer. But one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. So when you are wise, you harvest in summer. But if you're sleeping during harvest, you are a disgrace. You're not only foolish, but the scriptures calls you a disgrace to your parents, to, to God himself, to your community. Do you see it? A wise youth, a youth that harvest is wise. What is harvest? You might be thinking, what am I harvesting? A wise youth that harvest. And how do you harvest? You know your seasons. You know your seasons. You are in being, you are being ready at all seasons. A wise youth harvest in summer. But one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. You are not only foolish, but you are a disgrace. You see that? Are you a disgrace? Is that what you're doing? Know what season you are in by being ready at all seasons. Hear me very well. Know what season you are in by being ready at all seasons with your lamb and with your oil. You see the word of God? And 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says what? Be prepared in season and out of season. Be prepared in season and out of season. A foolish, a foolish a, 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 a virgin, a foolish Christian will be saying, no, let me just rest for uh, these two months. Then I will prepare. I will start getting ready next month. And that's what so many people tell themselves. You know what? Let me just rest. I've been working too much. Let me just rest for these two months. Then in the next month, I can start the project. But the Lord is saying, be prepared at all seasons for I am coming. Do not say, let me just enjoy life now. Then tomorrow I will give my life to God. Tomorrow, I will search, look for the treasure. Tomorrow, I will look for those opportunities. Why the, the Lord is saying, now is the time for the season. Be ready at all seasons. It's the word of God. Be ready at all seasons. So you know that if God, if the Lord is coming now, you are ready. If there's an opportunity coming now for you to pick up, you are ready. If you're looking for a job, be ready at all season. You want to do a business, be ready at all season. And how do you get ready? With your lamp and with your oil. You see that? Oh my God. Look at this. One thing we need to know is wise people and foolish people, they sleep two different types of sleep. Hear me very well. Wise people and foolish people sleep two different types of sleep. Wise people sleep blissfully. <laughs> Why fools? The foolish people sleep wishfully. Hear me very well. Wise people sleep blissfully. Why the foolish people the sleep wishfully? How do you sleep blissfully? You are sleeping with a vision. You are sleeping with a dream. You are going to bed with a dream, knowing that when you wake up, you're setting your feet to do that. I've got this email to do. I've got these messages. I'm looking for a job. I'm going to be searching the internet. I'm going to be searching in this location to see if I can find something. As I wake up, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But the foolish people sleep wishfully. You're wishing, okay, well now, I, I just wish I wake up and... Somebody just call me and say, there's an opportunity here, come. I just wish I wake up and somebody just come and give me some money. I just wish I wake up, somebody do something for me. I just wish I wake up and Harry Potter, there's a, there, you know, there is a magic in front of my house. 
I just wish this man is my husband. I just wish this woman is my husband. I just wish this person is my girlfriend. I just, you are wishing all the time. You are not doing anything about it. The foolish virgins were re in the place of wishing that, oh, but maybe I, I'm just wishing that when I go, the, she, the wise ones will give me some oil. You see that? They were just wish, wishing like, I will go and the wise one will give me some oil. And what happened? They were disappointed. They were disappointed because they went, they're like, no, go and buy us. Their wishes failed them. Always in a place of wishing, doing nothing about it. There is nothing bad with having wishes, but no, let those wishes turn into visions and dreams and you write them down. Habakkuk, is it Habakkuk chapter two? It says what? Write the visions down. Write it down on a piece of paper and start saying, I will navigate here. I will navigate here. I will navigate here. It doesn't matter whether the opportunities are there. See the opportunities in the visions that you have. Stop always wishing all the time. You're acting foolishly. Thank you, Jesus. Wise people... Prepare well to perform. Hear me very well. Wise people prepare well to perform. While fools live with an entitled expectation that someone else somewhere is going to do something to them for the next season. Just in their life is just going to be someone somewhere. They are waiting for an angel to appear in front of their house and you, you know. Wise people prepare well ahead of time. How did the Lord prepare well ahead of time? What did the Lord say? The Lord said, now let us make man. That was him preparing. He did not just say, go and say, I'm going to make man. But what did the Lord say? Now let us make man in our image. That is the preparation. The Lord did not just wake up and say, I'm making man in my image let us make he said now let us meaning what there's been a thought there's been something he's been nursing and you know now it's time for the manifestation there's been a will about it there are two types of people in the kingdom let me show you something the foolish ones and the wise one let me show you something because so many people are thinking the thing because you pray god is going to give you what you're giving he, you want it's not going to come i'm telling you let me show you something let me show you something in the scripture matthew 25 i think mm. let me show you something how god works with wisdom and ability let me show you something so many God's people will hardly manifest in the kingdom. See, God did not bring you to manifest in the earth or in the world. It's in the kingdom. That is why all the time the parables of Jesus is a king. He will say things like, the kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of this is like this. The Lord kept talking about kingdom, 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 not the earth or the world, kingdom. Kingdom. <laughs> oh, my shika Let me show you something. Let me show you something. We are not here to manifest as church members. We are here to manifest as kingdom people. The kingdom of heaven is like a hidden treasure. It's a hidden treasure, hidden for you to, And the treasure is hidden in these parables, these mysteries that Jesus was speaking. If you can unveil it, you will pick your talent. You will pick that talent that is kept for you in there. And when you pick it up, you will invest it. That was why this, the, the, the scripture says, this man that found the treasure in the kingdom, he did what he went with joy, he did. When he found it, he hid it first. Went and sold everything he had. Came back and bought it with. How, if he was not that valuable, why would I have to sell everything? I have to go and buy a treasure I found if he was not that valuable. You see that?
the parable of the talent. Let me just quickly read it. It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and, and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. To each according to his ability. The word of God did not say this man gave the talent. He just distributed talent. He gave some according to their abilities. Some had two, some had one. Why would some have one and some have two? According to your ability, your wisdom. If you are foolish, even that which God you have will be taken away from you and added to one that has ability to manifest with more. That is why some people are manifesting more than others. Not that God loves someone who is giving. He's giving. See, God gives his treasure, his talent. This talent is treasures. He, get, he makes it known to you according to your ability, according to your wisdom to find it. Not according to your manpower to pray and fast. According to your ability, your revelation to find it, you have it. It will be given to you. Let me not go deep, too deep into this. But if you want to manifest in the kingdom, your ability, your wisdom, your company, it will determine how much you will manifest in the kingdom. Why do you think some people will just come? Before you know they are. Some are still there saying, I am planning. I am thinking. I am waiting for God's time. I am. That talent is not even coming to you because the Lord is still looking at your ability to, to, to manage that wish you are asking him for. To every project, there is a budget. But your ability now to manage it will determine how much you will manifest in the kingdom. We are not here to manifest on earth or in the world. We are here to manifest in the kingdom. You see that? <laughs> Go back today. Take this message. Look at your company, your peer group. And begin to. Look at the red flags. Begin to ask yourself, Christian, where these people are going? Is it where I am going? Is that where, is that how I want to end up? Pick your friends wisely. Keep, keep, pick your company wisely. Pick your mentors, your spouses wisely. It takes wisdom. It's not time. It's not about time. When the wisdom is there, you will harvest in summer. The wise youth harvest. It does not say the youth harvest wisely, but the wise youth harvest. Why the foolish one is a disgrace? You see, harvest in summer. Because when you're wise, you will harvest in the season that God wants you to harvest. But when you're foolish, you will end up as a disgrace. Yes, great leaders seek out and find potential leaders that transform them into good leaders. This is what you're doing here. Raising powerful thinkers and kingdom. <laughs> My daughter, you see that? I have a teaching I did on mentorship. If you go back and listen to it, you will understand some of these things like that. You cannot born to be a great person. You're looking, you're looking for little my, foolish people and you're interacting with. Someone comes to your company. And not this. The foolish ones choose to be foolish. Like I said, the foolish ones choose to be foolish. It's not that the Lord created anybody to say you are foolish, you are wise. No. The foolish ones choose to be foolish. Then they choose other foolish ones to be with them. Nobody made anybody foolish. God created all of you. Everyone from his image. And anything from the image of God, there is no foolishness. You now decide to be foolish or to be wise. Then your company will determine where you're going to and who you are. So you don't wake up tomorrow and start blaming people. 
Make your decisions wisely and timely. When you use wisdom, you will make timely decisions. Hear me very well. When you apply wisdom, that is why Proverbs said, the wise youth harvest in summer. You will see that wisdom came before the season. Summer is the season. So when you're wise, you will make timely decisions because wisdom will lead you to make timely decisions and seasonal decisions. But when you're foolish, you do you make untimely decisions choose wisdom let your company be be filled with people that have the lamb and the light the lamb and the light do not go after rich people i said go after wise people i always say this i said no matter how wealthy you are even if you say, Ella, I'll be giving you a thousand, a million daily. If you're foolish, I can never have anything to do with you. Hear me very well. If you're foolish, no matter how wealthy you are, I will never have anything to do with you. Because I know that even in your foolishness, you'll be a disgrace. Your wealth will end up to be nothing. <laughs> you see that? Because when you are wise, you will harvest in summer. Wisdom comes first before harvest, before the season and the harvest. Wisdom is the key. I've not said go after rich people. I said go after wise people. The wise people will help you to meet the bridegroom. The wise people will direct you to meet your opportunities. The right people and 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 the right people and at the right time in seasons for your life. People have missed opportunities because of foolishness and foolish companies. Not because God did not bring those opportunities, but they were foolish and they could not identify these opportunities. Then they end up blaming people because of this person. Look at this, that. No, you have the decision to be whatever you want to become. You have the decision. It is for you now to make the decision. This is what I'm going to become. This is what I want to be. And how do you do? You don't just wish. You walk towards it. You do not need money to be wise. You do not need money to go after opportunities. No. You are a child of God. You are a kingdom citizen. When you have wisdom, you will know how to change these opportunities. You do not need finances to go after opportunities. Somebody's just saying right now, woman of God, look at this. I need this money. If I don't have this money, I have the wisdom. I have the plan, but I need money to foil it. It's a lie. What you need is more wisdom to bring the revelation, to unveil that parables in the vision that you have there. Yes, you do not need money for your plans to come into manifestation because when you have wisdom, the harvest will come. The harvest could be the money now, but God will make sure that there is wisdom. Your ability to each, the talent was given according to their ability. Your ability is your wisdom to know how to invest that talent. God will not fall a foolish project. I always say this. Let your company be filled with people that have the lamb and the oil. Choose wisely. Choose your friends wisely. The wise friends will direct you to the right people, the right opportunities. Hallelujah. Yes. Did you hear that? The right people will direct you to the right opportunities. Because when there is wisdom, the right things will start aligning. Some people still cannot have the finances, no matter how much they pray, the opportunities because of foolishness. The Lord is looking, if I give my talent to this person, it will be wasted. Go for wisdom. Keep wise people around you. If God even sees that your company is full of foolishness, the gate is still going to be closed. Your friends as well. Do you pray and fast, but your company will stop your season from manifesting. It will stop that gate from being opened. You will be shocked from, from meeting the bridegroom because of your company. So do not only think it's about me, your company. That was why there were five foolish virgins. The scripture did not say one. To show you that even your company will determine whether you meet the bridegroom or not. Whether you get that opportunity or not. You see the word of God? I always tell my daughters, whatever you need, search the scripture. Everything is there. You just need to catch the revelation in the message. Everything is there. 
You've been praying. You've been fasting. God, give me this. The Lord is like, if I give you this talent, it's going to be wasted. You see what happened to, to the guy who had the one talent and did nothing with it? It was taken back from him and given to the person that was doing something with it. God does not deal with idle resources. God does not deal with waste resources. I was telling my daughters, I asked them, I said, when God finished creating the world, was there anything as residual values? Was there any scrap? Was there any depreciation that we had to they say, okay, we had to scrap this because, you know, it, this came from the, 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 the particles or the, the, the residual values that came from creating a, a man or the world. This is the mess that came from it. So we, we had to tidy up the mess. There was no scrap. There was no depreciation. There was no residual value. The word of God says in Genesis that God looked at what he had done and he said it was good perfect no scrap no residual value there was no need for scrap there was no need for anything to be done there because everything was in place perfect good if you look at the meaning of good only god can make something good nobody can do anything good only god you see that <laughs> oh rabba shake it and you're here saying father you know just give me that 20 million you ask and you do not have because you ask are missed. There is no ability. That's why it's not coming. I'm telling you, there was a time I needed money for something. I said, Father, I need money for this. He said, Ella, when the time comes for the thing, I'm going to give you the money. When the time came, the Lord gave me the money for it. There was even a time the Lord put money in my account when I do not even know that I needed it. It is the next day that I saw now that I woke up. The money was already there. But the next day now I saw, I was like, Ah, oh, Father, you knew this thing will come. So you gave me the money even before that day. When there's an ability in you, God forced it even without you asking. You will not even need to ask. All he needs to see is that that ability is there for you to, for the project is there. And that project is found only in the will of God. In the kingdom. Mm hmm yeah so see so many people in the kingdom will never get rich they will never get some opportunities not that god does not want to give them but he knows there is no ability you will do nothing with it the talent you will do nothing with you will waste it god does not deal with waste resources some people the holy spirit is even ministering to me right now that some people are in a place of praying and asking god for children the lord is like I'm not even giving them these children. I'm withholding it from them because I'm still looking at their ability to train this child the way I want this child to be trained. Oh, Jesus, help me, Holy Spirit. I'm looking at their ability to train this child the way I want this child to be trained. That's why I'm withholding it from them. Ah, Jesus. Until when I see that the ability to nurture that which they want me to bring forth in them is there. Then I will start releasing. I will start funding the project. I will start releasing. And that project is not your project. It is the kingdom project. And the kingdom project is found in the will of God. That book of the will of God. That's where it's found. It's not your project. <laughs> that's why you ask and you do not receive. Because you ask and miss. You see that? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. May God give you wisdom. May God give you wisdom to know the abilities that he has put in you and be able to maximize it for the kingdom benefits, for kingdom growth, for kingdom advancement, for kingdom purposes. God is not going to fund a project out of his kingdom, out of his will for your life. Hear me again. Oh, Rabba Shakata. God is not going to fund a project for you out of his kingdom, out of his will for your life. Is it, what's the name? Is it Mercy Cox? Mercy, you've not shared. Just share. I have a word for you. Mercy, share. I have a word for you. 
I see something coming to you. Ma vi ba shen de zi ba va ba shada zokodo. Ke ba vogo shakata. Ma kaba o va ba shen de zi ba va da shada zokodo. Ma vi ba de vogo shakate. The wisdom God is giving you. Hi, Roderick, how are you? May you use it. The ability that God has put in you already. It is there. The talent is there. Yes, the talent is there. You're asking for millions when you cannot manage even a thousand francs. The talent is there. There is nothing God is going to give you now. You are a finished product. You are a manufactured finished product. You are not a manufactured work in progress. You are a manufactured finished product. There is nothing God is going to give you. But when you find that will, when the wisdom of God helps you to identify that ability he has put in you, it will be birthed in your spirit. Then the project will manifest. Everything you need for will come for it. That's how God operates in his kingdom. I'm telling you. Why would Jesus be speaking in parables? Why? Why? Have you ever sat to ask yourself that? Because I'm a very curious person. I do a lot of investigation in the spirit and in the kingdom. I'm telling you. Oof. I do a lot of investigation in the spirit. I investigate. I investigate. The Lord said the revelation is hidden to the wise Ella. <laughs> and when the time comes, I will reveal the truth to you. Hmm. when the season comes. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy, have you shared? Have you shared in the name of Jesus? Like now, there are people here. They already know that here. If you don't share, I'm not prophesying to you. They will not share, but they want me to prophesy. I will not prophesy as well. That's what God does. He has, we have, it has, there are kingdom principles. The Lord is like, if you don't do this, I cannot give you this talent. You're waiting for him to do it. You're praying, do it. Now you're praying, woman of God, just speak to me. I will not speak to you. I will withhold it until when I see that you're doing what I want you to do, then I'll release. That's how God operates in principles. He does not go out of his principles. He does not go out of his ways. No way. He cannot. You see that? That's why <laughs> we are still where we are. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mashika Raba Shon de Ziba Shika Raba Shoro Zagade. Ma Rogo Shen de Ziba Raba Shika Raba Shada Ziga Zogado. Rebe Shan de Ziba Shaka Ziga Raba Shokoto. I saw you waking up to a revelation. Is it Engineer Odofia? I saw you waking up to a revelation. And I don't know why I'm seeing like a judge. Is it like a magistrate judge or something like that? In this revelation, I don't know what this is all about. How are you, Kiki? In the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you wisdom. May the Lord give you wisdom. May the Lord give you wisdom in the name of Jesus. And there's something I begin to see even with you. Please, can you just tell me what this judge is I'm seeing? <laughs> who, is a, uh, who is like a judge? You know, who is like a judge? Who is like a judge or engineer Odolf here? Who is like a judge? Because I begin to see like a magistrate judge right there. And I begin to follow you up in the spirit. And as I come to the spirit realm, I begin to see like, I see someone like stealing, walking, you know, like walking farm. Let me just say it this way before they say, you know, you know, like walking the farm, something like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, who is this person? Who was, who is, who, who is like, who is a farmer? Something like that. In the name of Jesus. And may God guide you in your decision making. In Gina Odofia. <laughs> Apostle Lissico is like great teacher of the word. Apostle prophet teaches here. Glory be to God. We thank God for the grace. And I don't know any judge. There is. Okay. Let's just say for now you don't know it. But I see there's a judge somewhere. I don't know what this is all about. 
but I see one. And I do not know if you're married, but I begin to hear the Holy Spirit begin to say something to me like, it's like a, a great decision in your marriage you need to make, something like that. I don't know what decision you need to make in your marriage because I begin to see like this short black woman beside you. I don't know if it's your wife or what, but I begin to see it's like you need to make a decision about something. Hallelujah. We farm not much anyway. Okay. Because I begin to see like someone like in the farm. What decision are you struggling with to make? I begin to see like you and uh, like a woman is like your that's a decision you're struggling with to make something is going on hallelujah i release the peace of god in the name of jesus christ i release the peace of god thank you father yeah but what decision do you want to make because i begin to see it's like there's a decision you need to make because i see a black woman beside you you know what decision do you need to make in your marriage? Thank you, Father, for the open doors. Yes, I know your wife is that description. I see her. It's like she, she likes braids to braid her hair black with black uh, this thing. Black braids. I see your wife beside you, but it's like there's a decision you need to make. There's something. I don't know if that you two are talking about something or what. I don't know what it's all about, but I see something like that with you two in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for open doors. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your grace in the name of Jesus. All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. That's not what I'm looking for. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to pray for everybody. I have to go now. Father, Lord, I thank you for the lives of your people. Thank you, Father, for all you do for them. Thank you for your grace upon your, their lives. Thank you even for your wisdom that you're pouring upon their lives right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, that you go ahead of them in everything that they have to do. Father, pick them out. Bring the right company, the right plan, and the right places to their lives. Father, help them to identify themselves with the right people, the, the wise people, and begin to disconnect them, Lord God Almighty, from all foolish people in the name of Jesus. Father, begin to bring the right opportunities, the wisdom that you're giving to them even right now, Father. Let it begin to lead them to the right opportunities. May they be blissful thinkers in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare that you give them a miracle in the name of Jesus. I declare a miracle. I don't know what you're believing God for, but right now I begin to declare that you receive that miracle within 24 hours in the name of Jesus Christ. Even you holding that document in your hands, I release that which you're believing God for on that document right now in the name of Jesus. Go and get it. The opportunity is yours in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Father, even for your word that gave it light, that added our light. Thank you for understanding, for revelation. Thank you for the new thing that you've done here, Father. Thank you, Father, for the right companies, for everything you're doing right here, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this broadcast. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you be with them, even as they go. Go with them. Let your wisdom rest upon them, Father. Yes, Lord, even in their mouths, put it there, Lord. 
even in their mouth, put it there, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Uh, okay. But let me just go, but I don't know what project you're holding in your hand right now, Tandy, but I'm going. Because I was just about to go. Hmm? But I saw you. You were showing me a paper in your hand like that, like with a project. I don't know what is on, on that piece of paper that I just saw you showing it to me. But right now, I don't know what it is or what you're believing God for. I speak favor. I speak manifestation. I speak... Uh, uh, multiplication in the abilities in the name of jesus christ all right all right tandy because you submitted that plan that that because you submitted that plan that program before god the lord said it is he is bringing it into manifestation the lord says he's bringing it into manifestation in the name of jesus thank you so much pastor roxy please is there anyone if you're here watching me that you've not given your life to god hallelujah that you've not given your life to god i just want you to say this prayer with me say lord jesus christ i admit that i'm a poor sinner but right this day i come before you father and i ask you to come into my life Make me a new person. Cleanse me, Lord God Almighty. Give me your Holy Spirit. So I can live as a kingdom citizen and manifest according to the will that you have for my life. Thank you, Father, for I know right now I have been saved and I've been made whole. I'm a new person. Thank you, Lord, for making me a new person. And I walk in my salvation, in the power of grace that is manifesting in my salvation, given unto me by you, by faith, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. If you just made that prayer, congratulations and welcome to the kingdom of God. Start looking for that treasure that is hidden in the kingdom of God and start manifesting towards the truth and the manifestation of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Bye, everybody. Good night and I will see you tomorrow.